So I've had the iPhone 11 for the past two weeks since launch day. I've been using it pretty much every day, getting a feel for it. And finally now, after this time, I feel qualified to give you my full review. And maybe you're wondering if you've seen some of my previous content on this device, you know, do I still believe this is a great value iPhone? And to that, I say, stick around to find out. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, as the algorithm likes that, and will help push my videos to more people. So without waiting any longer, two weeks has been long enough, let's jump into my iPhone 11 full review. So beginning with design here, despite the fact that we have basically the same design as last year's iPhone XR here, this phone really is stunning, and I mean it. I love the form factor and the new colors that it comes in, especially this green color, which is a really beautiful teal. From the front, obviously nothing has changed, but from the back, we have a slightly different, more minimal back glass side. We still have glossy glass like last year. The Apple logo is now centered in the middle, and we have a nice contrast here with some matte glass surrounding the brand new dual camera setup, which we'll get to. Speaker quality has been substantially improved as well over the last gen. We now have spatial audio in Dolby Atmos, meaning that the sound quality is a bit louder and a lot more crisp, making movie watching, YouTube videos, and music listening an even better experience. And to wrap things up here, like I said in my previous videos, I really do enjoy the form factor, the 6.1 inch screen, which we'll talk about. It's just a really nice, comfortable size in my hand. This phone is lightweight. I love the glossy back. It feels very premium. The camera setup doesn't look as wonky as the one on the 11 Pro Max, I would say. The new colors are awesome and yeah overall I really do enjoy having this phone in my pocket it is a really pretty device moving on to display quality if you watch my own comparison or any comparison between the 10r and the 11 you may know that the display is no different this year it's still 6.1 inches diagonally it still has a sub 1080p you know 730p ish resolution and um, it's LCD, it's the liquid crystal uh, retina that Apple calls it. And so far, it has been just fine. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say it's, you know, equivalent to the OLED screen on the 11 Pro or the 10s or 10s Max. It's not. The contrast is evidently not as good. You go into a dark room, you're still going to see some backlight bleed because this is an LCD panel. It's not as sharp. It's not as bright. But truthfully, for most people, even if you came from like an iPhone 6 Plus, 7 Plus, 8 Plus, this display is more than good enough. It has a decent, you know, PPI. Once again, if you're not holding this two inches from your face, you're not going to notice any pixels. The colors look fine. The brightness is good enough for usage outside. It's a very pleasant display for watching YouTube and watching movies and just doing any sort of navigation through the UI, any media consumption. I've had no problem. The bezels are a bit thicker than those on the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max, but they honestly don't bother me. This display is more than big enough. And once again, it is a very, you know, sweet spot size. I got to say the 6.1 inch display on here is just small enough to be used somewhat one-handedly and big enough to be enjoyable once again for media consumption gaming really anything you want to do so although the display quality is not the best on the market it's not OLED it's not 1440p it's not gonna have the highest PPI it still is a display that most people are going to enjoy it's a great size it has decent color sharpness and I think most people you know the non-tech reviewing people out there even you know some Android users if you switch to this phone you're not gonna have any issue with it and I certainly don't even coming from an 11 Pro Max Moving on to battery life, I have had my SIM in this phone. I have used it for an entire day or two, you know, going to college, going throughout my day. I am somewhat of a moderate to heavy user. You know, I go on YouTube for sometimes hours. It's so bad, that's how I waste time. I do Safari searches, I send emails, I do phone calls. And at the end of the day, you know, probably after, I'm guessing at the minimum four to five hours of screen on time, I was around like, you know, 40% charge remaining. Now that may have been, you know, a particular day, but for the most part, what I can say is the battery life with this phone is very admirable. It appears to share the same screen on time with last year's 10R, which had really good battery life, but I do have to say, you know, this did not get the same battery treatment that the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max got, which do have substantially better battery life now this year. But yeah, this battery should get you through the day absolutely no problem. Even if you are, you know, somewhat of a moderate to heavy user, if you're on your phone all the time, you're not going to have an issue with the dying on you. Once again, as we know, it has wireless charging. But one sad thing is that Apple does not include a fast charge in the box because that's a exclusive feature you get with the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max but I would suggest you know buying a third party one like the one that you green sent me here it is a lot cheaper than Apple's setup here you get a USB type C to lightning cable 
and this charger for like around 26 bucks. Even though Apple does not include a fast charger in the box, it is not impossible to find one that will be, you know, equivalent in performance. So I highly recommend this one here if you buy the iPhone 11 once again. And yeah, both these together cost around like 25 to 27 ish dollars, which is a deal considering the fact that Apple sells the brick for $29 and God knows how much they charge for the cable itself. But yeah, this is a very sleek, minimal and affordable fast charging solution for the iPhone 11. And I will leave links in the video description for you to check out if you're interested in this product. But yeah, to sum things up with battery life here, if you are a moderate to heavy user, you should absolutely have no issues getting through an entire day with some charge left over at the end. Fast charging makes it better, you know, if you charge overnight too. And if you use your phone even less, you can get even more screen on time as the standby time is really, really excellent with this device as well. Moving on to camera performance, this was a big theme with the iPhone launch this year, and it's definitely the case for the iPhone 11. We now have an additional sensor and lens, which is ultra wide here. Both of the shooters are 12 megapixel, they're updated. And so far, pictures and video have been really nice looking and definitely sharper, crisper, have higher dynamic range, you know, just overall better image quality than last year's iPhone XS and XR phones. You can definitely see a difference. And if you're somebody who really is into camera, this is a phone you're gonna wanna upgrade to. I wouldn't say necessarily from the last gen, but maybe from like an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8. And once again, the ultra wide is really fun and really utilitarian. I love using it to take pictures of like landscapes and it's really useful in cases where you physically cannot back up anymore. You can just cram more into your shot. Videos are awesome with it too. You know, it kind of gives you like a GoPro like experience. But one gripe I have about the camera performance with this sensor and lens is that things can look a little bit, you know, more grainy with it. I don't know if that's just the nature of ultra wide or if Apple's, you know, like processing for it is not as good if they put more into the 12 wide. But yeah, the image quality is just not as good with the ultra wide but you know the upside is that you get such a wide field of view so I wouldn't really worry too much about that but yeah that is just one thing I did notice we also get night mode with the iPhone 11, which is really, really great. I mean, Apple was a little late to the game with adding this feature, but for the most part, images look really excellent and well-balanced in terms of color and exposure. Even in really, really dark situations, I've been able to capture awesome photos with the long exposure Apple has implemented here. And with the front camera, we now have a wider field of view so you can cram more people into your shots here, hello. We also have 4K 30 recording and slow motion video with the front facing camera. So if that's important to you, if you vlog or whatever you you create with your iPhone, that is fun as well. And the last thing I wanna talk about is the portrait mode on this device. It's a lot better because of the two cameras now, you know, now that we have, you know, hardware that can sense depth, um, you no longer have bokeh that is only exclusive to faces. You can take a picture of really anything that is, you know, close enough and add that bokeh effect. And it looks really, really nice. And of course you can adjust it in post. And yet if something's up with camera here, if you're coming from a previous gen iPhone, you know, like a 6S, 7, 8, this is definitely gonna be a substantial upgrade, you know, in the camera department apartment your images and videos are just going to turn out a lot better and once again the ultra wide is just a really fun and utilitarian piece of hardware Last up, let's talk about performance. This device is a powerhouse featuring Apple's latest and greatest SoC, the A13. It also comes with three gigabytes of RAM, which is gonna be great for, you know, multitasking, keeping a lot of apps open in the background, which I have been able to do absolutely no problem. Um, animations are smooth, apps open very, very quickly. Um, and overall, the iOS 13 experience is just very, very fluid as you would expect. One thing I have noticed though, is that it's not quite as smooth as my 11 Pro, and I'm not making that up. I cannot quite put my finger on it. It's, it's weird to me because these phones both have a 60 hertz refresh rate. So I don't know what it is. Maybe there's just a difference in like millisecond response time. Who even knows? But it's just a tad bit, you know, less responsive than the more expensive phones. But it's not even noticeable, I would say, to most people. And it's definitely not worth paying, you know, three to $400 more for, you know, a bit smoother of an iOS experience. Things here are really, once again, fluid. Whether you're just doing everyday tasks like email or texting or web browsing, um, um, and intensive stuff too is going to be really great as well as I demoed in the keynote um, You can play really intensive games, you know with really high frame rates If you really wanted to you could video edit on here You could edit 4k video on um, the a13 once again It's just a beast of a processor So whatever you want to throw out this phone whether it's just everyday tasks or you know intensive gaming video editing creative work if you are that person who does it on your device, this phone can handle it just as well as the more expensive phones. And that's what makes this phone such a great value. Despite the fact 
fact that it doesn't have, you know, all the camera features, despite the fact that it doesn't have an OLED display and, you know, the best of the best in terms of battery life, it still has the same lifeblood of iPhone. It still has the A13, which is the most important aspect, I think, you know, because at the end of the day, software performance is what you're, you know, noticing or interacting with the most. And if that's not good, the phone's not good. But thankfully, this is one of the best qualities of this phone alongside once again really great camera performance you know awesome battery life a really stunning design and a more than adequate display this phone is a beast once again with this apple design processor and you're really going to enjoy your time with this especially if you're coming from an older generation of phone like iphone 5s 6 6s 7 or 8. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video helped you out. iPhone 11 really is an awesome value. It blends some of the best aspects of the iPhone 11 Pro, which is a lot more expensive, like its camera performance and the best things that came from the 10R, like its design and form factor. And it has a really great sticker price of $699 here. I'm so happy that Apple lowered the price once again. And this really is the iPhone most people should buy. I would even be happy with it, even though I am a tech reviewer and I have access to, you know, more technology than most people. I have really enjoyed using this and I'm probably going to keep it around because I do really enjoy just the feel in the hand, the weight of the phone, and just the overall form factor once again. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.